Learning mathematics is very, very difficult to many people, second only to learning how to speak English. Do you have difficulty? Don't be embarrassed. It's a lot of people don't know what they're doing when they get up there and do their mathematics. We're going to introduce you today to Fort Bend Tutoring, honey. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today we'll be talking about factoring quadratic trinomials, part one. This is part one of a three-part series, so make sure you check out the other videos in the series to make sure that you have everything down pat, ladies and gentlemen, all right? So here's the deal. So this video is going to help us factor quadratic trinomials in the form of AX squared plus BX plus C, especially when A equals to 1, all right? And an example of that is the following expression. All right, here we is. Let's get it in the view. Let's get it in the view. If we have X squared plus 13X plus 12, the sign of the second term determines the sign of the biggest factor. The sign of our last term will determine whether we need to add or subtract to get the middle number, all right? to get the value of the second term, that coefficient there, all right? So let's go ahead and put this into practice because that's the best way to show it, okay? So let's get started on this. Let me go ahead and turn the page. So here we are with problem number one. I have x squared minus 7x plus 12. Your first step after you've recognized that you're dealing with a quadratic equation where a equals to 1, and this one is because our first term is 1x squared, so I know that first coefficient is 1. We'll want to find the factors of 12, that last number, that last value there, in other words, your third term. Well, the factors of 12 are the following. You have 1 times 12, you have 2 times 6, and you also have 3 times 4. So what you want to do is you want to open up two sets of parentheses. So I'm going to have have my parentheses opened up here and the square root of your first term in this case x squared which is x will be the first term in each of the parentheses that you have just opened up all right then after that focus on the sign of the last number that positive sign is telling me that I'll need two factors of 12 that will add to give me 7 well I know that 1 plus 12 is 13 and 2 plus 6 is 8 and 3 plus 4 is 7. Well, that's the value that I need. That last one right here, this 3 plus 4, is going to add to give me my 7 that I need as that middle coefficient, that middle number. So I'm going to start, and I always lead, ladies and gentlemen, with the largest factor first because I like to be consistent. And also because the sign of the middle term will always be the sign of this largest factor every single time. So whenever I'm factoring here, I want to make sure that I recognize that, hey, the largest largest factor has the same sign as that middle term's coefficient, so it's going to be negative. Since I'm adding, ladies and gentlemen, keep in mind that like signs add, unlike signs subtract, therefore the sign of the 3 has to be negative. So since they are adding, they must be the same sign. So that means that this is my answer. Yeah, just like that. Mm -hmm. It's over. It is over. That's the answer. Also keep in mind that since your answer is the product of two binomials, in order to check this, you can always just simply multiply these together, all right, using either the FOIL method or the distributive method. In other words, get your arrows popping in order to check your answer. So I'll end up multiplying x times x gives me x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. And then finally, negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12. All right. If we were to combine these middle terms here, you'll end up with x squared minus 7x plus 12. And this checks out with your original problem, ladies and gentlemen. And that's it. So for step purposes, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and recap on what you just did. Well, we started out by recognizing that we did have the form of AX squared plus BX plus C where A equals to 1 because that first coefficient is 1. From there, we found the factors of 12. My factors of 12 are 1 times 12, 2 times 6, as well as 3 times 4. I have my framework of the answer here in the form of two binomials. Two sets of parentheses were opened up. The square root of x squared, which is x, and I used that for the first term of both of my binomials. And then I found the two factors of 12 that added to give me 7. That would be 3 and 4. Notice that I'm not caring about the signs right now. I worry about the signs at the end. But for right now, I just needed two factors of 12 that would add to give me 7. So that was 4 and 3. Then the sign of your largest 
first factor, the 4 in this case, is always going to be the sign of the middle term's coefficient. So that's why my 4 is negative. Because I'm adding to get 7, this 3 has to be the same sign. If these were unlike signs, they would subtract. And so since I needed to add, they have to be the same sign. That's why the 3 had to be negative. And done. That's it. Yeah, we call this the easy type of trinomials here, okay? So these are the easy trinomials. So let's look at some more. All right, check out problem number two. For problem number two, I have x squared plus 8x minus 33. Mm -hmm. So because I recognize that this is in the correct form of ax squared plus bx plus c, where a equals to 1, I'm going to go ahead and find the factors of 33. And remember, I'm not caring about the sign right now. So that's why I didn't bring over a negative 33. I just need the number and its factors. So here I have 33. And knowing the factors of 33 are just 1 times 33 and 3 times 11, all I'm going to do from there is open up two sets of parentheses here, knowing that my square root of x squared is just x, so I have my x there, and I'm looking for two values that will multiply to give me 33, two factors, and subtract to give me 8. Well, 1 and 33 don't subtract to give me 8, but 11 and 3 will. So I will use 11 and 3. And remember, the sign of that middle term's coefficient must be the sign of the largest factor, that biggest number. So my 11 must be positive. Since I'm subtracting to get 8, the 3 needs to be the opposite sign of the positive 11 here. So this needs to be a negative 3 here because unlike signs subtract and like signs add. So in this case, since I needed these two values to subtract to give me 8, if I have a positive 11, this 3 needs to be negative so they will subtract. All right. And that's the answer. Done. Let's go ahead and put a red box around that. I like putting red boxes around my answers just to let you know. Just a little inside scoop on Mr. Witt. All right. So here we are. Next problem. Problem number three. I have x squared minus 5x minus 24. Well, I do recognize that this is in the correct format, ax squared plus bx plus c, where my first coefficient is 1. So what I want to do next is I want to find all the factors of 24. So here we are, 24. Let's check it out. I know I have 1 times 24, yeah, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and 4 times 6. Okay, now what do I want to do with these factors? This last sign is telling me that I need to subtract the factors to get 5. Mm -hmm. So 24 minus 1, nope. 12 minus 2? Nope. 8 minus 3? Bingo. That's exactly what I need. I need two numbers that will multiply to give me 24, and according to our expression here, subtract to get 5, and that's 8 and 3. So the beauty of this technique that I'm showing you today is that you never really have to guess about anything. There is a process that you can follow every single time to get the answer. The actual expression tells you what you're looking for. The last sign will tell you to add or subtract to get the middle term. The middle term will tell you the sign of your largest factor. So a lot of this is given to you if you know what to look for. All right, so let's continue working this out. I'm going to open up two sets of parentheses here. I know that the square root of x squared is just x. I know that I'll be using 8 and 3 to subtract to give me 5. So I'll have 8 here and also 3. I'll keep the sign of the middle term's coefficient, which is negative. And because I'm subtracting in order to get 5, I'll need this 3 to be the opposite sign, which is a positive. And that's it. That's the answer. That's it. There you go. Hope you enjoy that. I did. Next problem. Problem number four. Here we have 9 plus x squared plus 10x. Now, this is definitely a quadratic expression because my highest exponent is 2. However, it's not in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. So there will be times that you'll need to rearrange your terms in order to get into the correct form. So I'm going to rearrange this, and it'll be x squared plus 10x plus 9. All right? That's what I have. So I'll be looking for two factors of 9 that will add to give me 10. So what are my factors of 9? 1 times 9 and 3 times 3. Okay? So I need two of these factors that will add to give me 10. So the only one that'll do that is the 1 and the 9. That's right. So here I am, once again, opening up two sets of parentheses. I have my square root of x squared, which is x.
I then will have my 9 and 1. My largest factor will always be the sign of the second term. So since that 10 is positive, the 9 must be positive. Since I'm adding, the 1 also needs to be positive. Because remember, like signs add, unlike signs subtract. So my 1 must be positive in order to add with that positive 9 to give me a positive 10. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the answer. That's it. I hope you guys are really feeling this. Okay, so let's continue on. Problem number five. Okay, so in this problem here, and this is my screen straight. Let me let me fix this screen. My screen must be straightened. Okay, problem number five. I have two x squared minus thirty x plus fifty two. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, this is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. However, the first coefficient is not one; it's two. We'll see, that's not the format for the ones that we've been solving thus far. But I will remind everyone here that you always look for the greatest common factor anytime you're factoring anything. In other words, we're trying to find if each of these three terms have something in common other than one. And lo and behold, they do. Notice that every single coefficient is an even number. That means they can all be divided by two. All right, I'm going to factor out two, and that'll leave me with x squared minus 15x plus 26. Okay, now because I factored out my GCF of 2, what's left inside of the parentheses is the form of the trinomials that we've been working today. Okay, so that means that what I'll do is I'll continue to bring down that GCF and I'm going to open up two sets of parentheses here. Okay, I know that the square root of x squared is going to be x and I know that I'll need to look at the factors of 26. So 26 is made up of 1 times 26 or you could even say it's 2 times 13. And so these are all the factors for 26. I'm looking for two factors of 26 that will add to give me 15. So I know that 1 and 26 don't add to give me 15, but 2 and 13 will. They add to give me 15. So that means that my largest factor is 13. My smallest factor here is 2. And remember, I will Will always keep the sign of that middle terms coefficient so that means the 13 must be negative since I'm adding to get 15 does that mean that the 2 needs to be negative or positive let's think like signs add unlike signs subtract okay well if I need to add because that last term there is a positive I know I need to add to get 15 so it has to be the same sign so therefore if the 13 is negative the 2 must be negative as well. So remember that your first step must be to factor out any GCF you may have and then because we had the format of the previous problems that AX squared plus BX plus C where A equals to 1 inside of the parentheses here we were able to factor. That's right we were able to factor this. So in doing so we continue to bring down that GCF and we brought down X minus 13 times X minus 2 as well which was the factorization of that trinomial inside the parentheses and that's my answer yeah that's my answer ladies and gentlemen alright well ladies and gentlemen this is gonna conclude factoring quadratic trinomials part one I hope you appreciated that alright cuz I appreciate the opportunity to show you right okay so it works both ways well as always please like our Facebook page go ahead and follow us on Twitter at Fort Ben tutoring and ladies and gentlemen peace we certainly hope you enjoyed today presentation by Fort Ben tutoring did you understand the program? Would you like to rate us or give us some feedback or subscribe to us? You could do all that on tutormemath.net.